solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Mayor. Can you please tell the members of the jury your name? Wendy Doyville. And where are you employed? The Sanford Police Department. Last thing for the record. Sure. Do you like David O R I B like Victor A L? And how long have you been employed with the Sanford Police Department? Um, a little bit over five years. All right. And your current position there is what? I am the accreditation manager. And give the jury an idea of what your duties are as the accreditation manager. I pretty much my job is to um, make sure that we meet the standards every three years through the Commission of Florida Accreditation. All right. Let me turn your attention to February of 2012 um, and, and the dates prior to that. What was your position then? I was a volunteer program coordinator. And what were your duties as a volunteer program coordinator? Um, to recruit and train police volunteers for citizens on patrol and um, for office volunteers as well. All right. Did you also work with the Neighborhood Watch Program? Yes, I sure did. All right. And how long had you been working with the Neighborhood Watch Program? Since I started, I kind of had my finger in Neighborhood Watch <coughs> since 2008. And just uh, give us an idea of what your specific duties were coordinating between the police department and various Neighborhood Watch programs. Um, pretty much uh, the community will contact me who wanted to start a Neighborhood Watch. And my job was pretty much to help them coordinate that. So um, I would give them information as at what is Neighborhood Watch, what the program is, and help them set that up in their neighborhood. All right, and tell the jury, what is a Neighborhood Watch program? Neighborhood Watch is a program that's run by um, community volunteers in the neighborhood who are community members who are interested in deterring and preventing crime in their community. And what would you do specifically to help uh, a community form a Neighborhood Watch program? Typically what I would do is um, when they contact me, we'll schedule a presentation and I will go out to the community and do a presentation about what Neighborhood Watch is, um, how to get involved with Neighborhood Watch in your community, and how to get to know your neighbor to prevent crime in your community. Are there positions within the Neighborhood Watch volunteer program? Yes, they are. And what are those? One is the Neighborhood Watch coordinator, uh, one is some block captains, and then there's the Neighborhood Watch participants. All right, I want to just take those in order briefly. What is the duties and responsibilities of a Neighborhood Watch coordinator? The coordinator serves like a liaison to the police department. So pretty much they would be the ones that would have um, contact with me as far as if they need any further training as far as crime permission methods or techniques. And a block captain, what is that person's duties and responsibilities? The, the block captain will serve more as getting people in their block more involved in Neighborhood Watch, sharing the concept of Neighborhood Watch and encouraging everyone to report suspicious activity. All right, in the third category were participants? Yes. And what are their duties or roles? Their duties is just to be the eyes and ears for law enforcement, it is um, report crime as they see it, report suspicious activity to 911 and non-emergency dispatch. All right, and I think you said when you start up a Neighborhood Watch program, you actually go out to the community and, and give them a presentation? Yes. What areas do you cover when you make such a presentation? We cover everything in um, crime prevention. We cover the duties. We cover um, how to be part of the community, um, getting engaged. When I first come out to do a presentation, the first thing I do is I have every resident there introduce themselves and let, let us know what their number one concerns are in the community. And you actually give a PowerPoint presentation at those startup meetings? Yes, I do. Do you also provide the participants with any sort of paperwork? Yes, I usually provide a lot of handouts. All right, and what types of things do those handouts cover? Pretty much how Neighborhood Watch works, the history of Neighborhood Watch, um, preventing crime in your area, how to make your home more secure, um, preventing burglaries, how to get your neighbors engaged, stuff like that. All right, do you address specifically what a Neighborhood Watch person is to do if they see someone acting suspicious? Yes, I do. And what is that? If someone is acting suspicious, you call 911 or non-emergency dispatch. Do you tell them to do anything else at that point? No. All right. They're the eyes and ears. In that instruction, um, is that also part of the written materials? 
Yes. All right. What do you tell volunteers about following someone they believe might be involved in criminal behavior? We tell them they don't do that. That's the job of law enforcement. And what do you tell Neighborhood Watch participants, participants about confronting someone they might be uh, involved in criminal behavior? Not to confront, to let us do the job, that the police department do the job. Specifically, did you have any involvement with the formation of a Neighborhood Watch program in a community in Sanford known as the Retreat at Twin Lakes? Yes, I did. And what was your first involvement uh, with forming a Neighborhood Watch program in that community? I got a phone call from George Zimmerman. Did you eventually meet George Zimmerman? Yes, the day of the presentation. All right, do you see that person in court this morning? Yes. Could you identify where he's sitting and what he's wearing? He's sitting um, over there with the, I think it's a, let's see, it's just stood up. Is the gentleman standing up? Yeah. All right, you're on to ask that the record reflect that the witnesses identify the defendant. It will re so reflect. And when was it approximately that you first had that phone call, that first contact from the defendant? Sometime in August. I don't remember the exact date. August of 2011? Yes. All right. And then did that lead you to do a startup presentation in that community? Yes, we had several, a few phone calls between then, between the presentation, trying to schedule a date. That is you and the defendant? Yes. All right. Um, and as a result of that, was a presentation meeting scheduled? Yes. And what was the date of that meeting? September 22nd, I believe, of 2011. All right. And where was that meeting held? It was at the clubhouse at the retreat in Twin Lakes. And what time of day or night would that have been? Probably about 7 p.m. And was the defendant himself present for that meeting? Yes. Did you speak with the defendant at that meeting? Yes. Is that the first time you had met the defendant in person? Yes. Our communication was between either phone or email beforehand. <laughs> Was the Homeowners Association president of the Retreat at Twin Lakes Complex also present at that meeting? Yes, he was. And what was his or her name? Uh, Don O'Brien. And approximately how many other residents uh, attended the startup meeting? About 25, approximately. And those would have been all residents of the Retreat at Twin Lakes community? Yes. All right. Did you go through uh, the PowerPoint presentation at that meeting? Yes, I did. Did you also provide uh, the written materials at that meeting? Yes. Was anyone named the Neighborhood Watch coordinator for that community at that meeting? Uh, yes, but it was even before then that Mr. Zimmerman was the Neighborhood Watch coordinator. The defendant was the Neighborhood Watch coordinator? Yes. All right. He had told me he was um, asked by his HOA to be the, to coordinate it and to, like he's pretty much gonna take the role of the coordinator. All right, and he agreed to do that? Yes. All right. Did you give any additional materials to the defendant because he was the Neighborhood Watch coordinator? Yes. The day of the presentation, I gave him a coordinator's handbook for Neighborhood Watch. And why do you give that particular handbook to the coordinator? Because they're part of their responsibilities, not just as liaison, is to also share the crime prevention concepts within, um, within, that, within the publications and also is to um, um, coordinate the actual neighborhood of Washington to coordinate all the block captains in there. All right. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes, you may. Ms. Dorval, let me show you what's been moved into evidence at States 189. Do you recognize that? Yes. Okay, would you examine the contents? Just pull that out and examine the contents to make sure it's complete. And as you're doing that, what do you recognize States 189 to be? Is the Neighborhood Watch Coordinator's Handbook? And would that be a uh, copy of the handbook that you gave to Mr. Zimmerman uh, at that first meeting? Yes, it looks like all the pages are, are here. It's complete. show you 190 and ask you to examine that. Do you recognize 190? This is um, the PowerPoint presentation I provide to a neighborhood. All right, and would you examine that too? Sure.
that also complete? Yes, it is complete. All right. Let me ask you to look at the screen. Um, states want, no, could you hit um, the light, please? Thank you. States 191. Um, is that particular PowerPoint slide contained within the presentation that you gave to the defendant and the other members uh, who attended the Neighborhood Watch meeting at the Retreat of Twin Lakes? Yes. And what did you explain uh, to the defendant and the other attendees uh, about that slide? Basically that they are the eyes of ears for law enforcement. They're an extension of law enforcement. That um, they're not supposed to take matters into their own hand. And they call 911 anonymous dispatch to report suspicious activity and to let law enforcement take the risk of approaching a suspect or. All right. And if anyone at the meeting would have had a question um, about that I concept, would you have answered that question for them? Yes. Let me ask you to look at States 190. Is that a page of the handout uh, in the coordinator's handbook? Yes, it is. All right, and specifically um, on the uh, right-hand side, I'm, I'm circling it with my laser, if you can see it. Uh, bullet point number 10, explain to the members of the jury how you explained bullet point number 10 or, or, or what that addresses. Basically, it talks back about the responsibility of law enforcement is to apprehend and question any suspicious person or suspect. It's and not their responsibility. And again, furthering the concept that the volunteer is the eyes and ears, but it's the police who actually do the confronting uh, yes. and engaging. Correct. Right. And that handbook, or that page of the handbook, was furnished to this defendant? Yes, sir. All right. You, know, you may turn on the lights, please. Thank you. Did you ever tell the defendant or anyone else at that meeting that it was okay to follow someone that they thought was acting suspicious? No, not at all. Did you ever tell the defendant or anyone else in that meeting uh, that it was okay to engage someone they thought was being suspicious? No. At that meeting uh, on September 22nd of 2011, did the defendant share with you what his major was in his education? Yes, he mentioned it was criminal justice. And as you described earlier in, in your presentation to the uh, volunteers at Retreat at Twin Lakes, did you share with them what they are to do if they see someone involved in what they believe may be suspicious or criminal behavior? Yes, it's called 911 and non-emergency dispatch. All right. Is there a distinction between th that you told them between the time that they should call 911 as opposed to the time they should call the non-emergency number? Yes, it is. And there what is. is that distinction? Um, pretty much you give them a scenario. Basically, if you come home and in your balcony you notice that your bike is missing, that's a non-emergency dispatch call. You don't need immediate police to be there. When you call 911 is whether property, um, your liberty, or someone is, um, <coughs> It's property liberty or you are in some kind of physical danger that, that you call 911. So there's a, there's a big distinction there. But overall, I tell them, if you don't know, just call 911. There's no, there's no, don't try to figure out, should I call this one? Don't hesitate. Just call 911 if anything. All right. And when you conducted the startup meeting at the retreat at Twin Lakes, were there any uniformed police officers from the Sanford Police Department present? Yes, there were. And is that standard procedure to have someone an actual certified law enforcement officer at the meeting? Yes, it is, because uh, we want to get the um, community service officer engaged with their community. So right, we want you, the community to know who their officers are. Do you recall specifically the officer or officers that were present at that meeting? Yes, um, it was Sergeant um, Paul Herx and um, Officer Buchanan Clapp. All right, and after uh, the meeting in September of 2011, and did you continue to communicate with the defendant about crime issues in the retreat at Twin Lakes neighborhood? He did initiate a contact with me um, maybe a month or two after that regarding a burglary that had occurred previously. And what was the nature of the contact? Did he visit you? Did he call you? It was he, an email. All right. And did he, in fact, email you multiple times um, about issues within the neighborhood? Um, after the presentation? Well, well, before and after. Yeah. The, well... The first time he emailed me uh, was 
about starting the neighborhood watch, you know, and basically saying there were several burglaries that had occurred in his community. He was concerned about them. All right. Your Honor, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Cross? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. If you'll excuse me just for one more minute. Sure. I wonder if I could approach the clerk and let me know. You may do so. All right, here we go. Um, my name is Don West. I represent Mr. Zimmerman along with uh, Mr. O'Meara. Uh, Ms. Dorval, let's talk just a little bit more about your role with Neighborhood Watch. Okay. Is it basically your job when somebody expresses an interest in the program to be the contact person with the Sanford Police Department to set it up and sort of monitor it along the way? Yes, it was. And you've done that kind of work until your recent job changed for, what, four or five years? Yes, and before that at a different law enforcement agency in the Northwest. Uh, so that's, that's something that you're familiar with, not just with Sanford Police, but with um, other agencies as well. That is correct. So you've done that lots of times, I take it, presentations. Yes, I've done several presentations, different presentations. The presentation that you gave to the Homeowners Association in the fall of 2011, is that sort of your standard presentation? Yes. And the PowerPoint reflects the kinds of slides that you go through? Yes, yeah, a standard presentation for a Neighborhood Watch startup. About how many pages are in the presentation? We only saw one here today. Um, there's several pages. I can't tell you how many offhand. I think it's right here, the presentation. You want Give me, me an idea. Them? Sure. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're welcome to, if you would, um, without spending a lot of time at it, just kind of walk through it briefly when you're there with the group, how you introduce the concept and what you tell them you want them to do for you as part of the Sanford Police Department. Uh, 25, with the cover in the, end, in the last page. And the presentation takes about how long? I usually tell people who are coordinating the event to give me about an hour, because I like to do the introductions first to get um, neighbors to get to know each other, because that's, that's one of the main priorities that we want to establish, is that neighbors get to know each other and get to talk to each other, so they can mm -hmm. watch out for each other. So the idea is to not just have you explain how the program works, but to generate interest? Generate interest, enthusiasm, and also to get them to talk to each other. A lot of neighbors don't talk to each other these days. Uh -huh. So just to get them to share with each other, look out for each other, and to care about one another. And that requires, I guess, some pro, pro action, some proactive yes. work. And that's why what I, what I do uh -huh. during the beginning is to just let them introduce themselves, you know, where about they live and also um, talk about the number one concern so they all know that they might share that same concern so they have something in common and then what leads what what leads up to the meeting that you have I take it is you have been contacted by somebody yes on behalf of the homeowners association in this instance um, mr. Zimmerman was asked to be that person that's what I know of yes okay so he initiates a call by email or a contact by email or, or phone. Yes. And then you and he sort of coordinate the business of you 
making the presentation? I believe my first contact with him was by phone, and he was expressing to me um, the issues that had gone in his community, mm -hmm. and how concerned he was with it, and the HOA as well, and how the HOA had asked him to kind of be the, the steering person to take this on and bring it about the community. And was he polite and courteous and respectful? Yes, every time. You said part of the reason you have the meeting is to generate enthusiasm, of course, but that requires, I take it, that there be some people there. Yes. So how do you do that? How do you help get enough people there um, that they can hear your message? That's where the coordinator, the person assigned to get the meeting started, helps me out in. Okay. So um, one of the things I did do is um, I provided Mr. Zimmerman with some flyers. I think it was either two or 300, I'm not sure, and he passed them out for us and generated that enthusiasm for people to get there. And that would be something that you would want him to do and, and ask him to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So as far as you know, he did that because there was a pretty good crowd. Yes. Some people would say no, but I would say that was a pretty good crowd. 20, 25 people? Yeah, approximately. Do you know how many people lived in the community? I believe there was somewhere between 200 and 300 homes. I don't remember. So plus, I guess, however many people lived in each home, so yes. several hundred residents in the community? I would say so. Sure. So, at the meeting, once you've been able to generate enough interest to make the presentation, mm -hmm. do you have a conversation with the residents that are there about any issues they may have with crime in the neighborhood and why it is they wanted a neighborhood watch to start with. Well, at the end, when everyone introduced themselves at this particular meeting, um, the number one common issue was burglaries. They had uh, several burglaries that summer, and that was the original reason why I was contacted, and that was the number one concern for most of the residents there. Mm -hmm. And in anticipation of a presentation in a specific community, um, you sort of look into that, don't you? you I sure did, and I uh -huh. noticed that there were several burglaries before I arrived there. So you can, you can sort of look where crimes are occurring by some computer mapping software? Yeah, we have a crime mapping um, uh -huh. software. And you were able to verify, indeed, there had been a number of burglaries yes. in this community. Yeah, I knew that before I went to the meeting. So you knew the concern was real? Yes. Was there some concern at the meeting about an unsecured access point to the community. Yes, there was. Um, Can you describe that a bit? Something about either a gate not working or um, not having a strong enough fencing around the, the home. So there were some issues that they had with the HOA in particular about some kind of fencing that wasn't working. They had some issues about lighting and just the, the perimeter of the property. The perimeter being, being the outside area. Yes. And are you saying that one of the issues was that part of the perimeter was not secured by a fence so that people from the outside could simply walk into the community without going through the gate? Yes, that was a concern because they felt that people were coming through there committing burglaries through those unsecure areas. Mm -hmm. So the concern was people could basically sneak in and then do whatever they were going to do and sneak out without going through either of the entrances? Yeah, either of the secured entrances that they have because they're a right. gated community. Okay. I take it that's not something you can help with particularly? Not particularly. What I could do is I could offer suggestions uh -huh. to the HOA about security and lighting and just based on the concepts of um, SEPTED, I can base, give them some recommendations. But at that point in the meeting, Mr. John O'Brien said that that was going to be taken care of as far as lighting and some of the fence issues. You knew Mr. O'Brien to be the, the president of the Homeowners Association? Yes, I made him the date of the presentation. So there was the perimeter access issue, and there were also some lighting issues mm -hmm. that residents were concerned that there was inadequate lighting in certain parts of the yes. community. Do you know where that was? Not particularly. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted them to take me there, but at that point it had gotten too late to mm -hmm. do that. Anybody mention in between the backs of the houses that there's no uh, street lights or other kinds of lighting? I believe that was mentioned, that there was poor lighting. Mm -hmm. 
So Sanford Police doesn't supply lights, I take No, it. we don't. Okay. So you could raise that issue and say, yes, indeed, that is a legitimate safety concern. So as the Sanford Police representative, you recommend they address it. Yes, but they don't have to. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And the same way, I take it, with the perimeter fence or lack of it. Exactly. They had another issue with the... Uh, another issue that came up to mind with the burglaries was the patio doors. Um, there was like a hinge that would always pop open, so a lot of the burglary entries were done through the back through a patio door, so there was that concern too. Um, so I recommended that they go to Lowe's and get this locking device. It's kind of a lever to lock that patio door. I think it was a, an issue just with the development. By the development, did you understand this uh, community to be um, a, a townhome community? Yes. And that there were buildings that might contain several townhomes Yes. Um, around this, this larger community of about 300 homes. Yes. So I, if I hear what you say, you're saying that all of the houses or the townhomes would have that same sliding glass issue, sliding glass door issue. Yeah, but not everyone complained about it. There was a handful of people that did. So some people might not have that issue, but it mm -hmm. seemed like it was a common issue that I thought was interesting just because it was a fairly new development. With your training and experience, you knew there was a pretty simple, inexpensive fix. Yes. There's a bar at, at Lowe's they can get. It's a locking mechanism that they can fix that with. And with that device in place, for example, um, it's pretty hard to get in one of those doors. Well, they could always smash the window. Of the, course. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, but they can't yeah. pry the lock. They can't quickly. lift it. They, usually mm -hmm. um, patio doors can be lifted off. Um, the rails and be just pushed out with no one even noticing that someone's coming into your home. Did you give them other similar tips about common issues to be aware of uh, for safety of person and property? Yeah, we kind of, in the presentation, we talk about kind of a broad range of crime prevention stuff. So mm -hmm. it's, I try to give them as much as information as I can in the hour I have because I want to try and um, enable them to really help prevent crime in their homes, you know, as far as you know, if, if you have floodlights in the back or if you um, keep your light on or locking your door, that's the simplest thing I can tell. So lock your door. No, so many people don't lock their front door. So um, I just try to really pump them with a lot of information in the short time I have. Some of it's, I take it, pretty common sense. It is, but sometimes people have to be reminded. You mm -hmm. know, we, so sometimes we just get careless. You lock your door. You keep your windows shut. Yes. You uh, have a deadbolt installed if you don't have one. Yes. That sort of stuff. How about... Um, if you're stepping away from home, close the garage door. Yes, that's a common one. People mm -hmm. leave the garage doors open. Or if they are home, they leave the garage door open, and then all of a sudden the lawnmower is missing. So as part of your presentation, you are, in addition to generating the interest to make the community neighborhood watch more active, mm -hmm. um, you're also providing some specific tips. Yes. And did you do all that uh, at the meeting there at Retreat at Twin Lakes? Yes, pretty much. And answered individual questions that some of the residents may have had about specific uh, security issues. Yes. Did someone mention to you that there had been a home invasion burglary? Yes. Sustained. Your Honor, if I could be heard briefly. Well, it's an out-of-court statement made by somebody who's not here to be cross-examined, so it is hearsay. Admittedly, it is. I think there's an exception because this, ex this witness has been called to talk about her role in the community and why she did certain things. And she can do that without saying what somebody reported to her. So my obje your, uh -huh. the objection is sustained and my ruling remains. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Based upon what people told you they had experienced in the community, would you then give advice, may, maybe specific advice, about how to make their home more secure? Yes, um, that bar was one thing. Um, we did have a resident who was pretty upset because someone in daylight had come into her home um, and attempted to burglary, and she had a small child. And she was really upset about that during the presentation. And that's one of the things that I would talk to. I try to tell them, you know, I, I believe, I don't remember quite right, if they entered through the back or if they entered through the front and she had the door unlocked, but she was upstairs. 
that was one instance where there was a burglary and um, someone entered her home and she was very frightened by it and she shared that experience at the meeting with us. Was she very scared? Yes, because she had a, a baby, she was alone, it was just her and her baby, so it was, it was, it was very um, terrifying for her. It was evident to you that she was still traumatized? She was still shaken up by it, yeah. Do you know how recent that event may have been to your presentation? It was very recent because it seemed very fresh to her, so I believe it was within a month. Mm -hmm. Is the emphasis on communication, that aspect of it, is that to get the neighbors to be aware of what's happening at the other neighbor's property? Yes, that's a big part of it. Give you know. me, explain that a little bit more. Okay. Well, being part of a neighbor to watch, the best thing about it is to let neighbors know what's going on so you can protect yourself. So if you know that your neighbor next door has had a burglary, then you can be more aware that, hey, this is occurring. I need to lock up my stuff. But also, as a neighbor, you can look to see if there's anything suspicious going on you know, at your neighbor's house or if there's something going on that, sh you know, some someone that doesn't belong there or something that, that seems odd to you to report it. Do you encourage neighbors to tell each other about anything suspicious? Yes. To share all the information you can, and whether you see anything suspicious, if any crime has been committed, um, you know, just keep those lines of communication open. And if there are safety concerns or some <laughs> issues, maybe not rising to the level of a call to the police, but a safety issue that might relate to something you said, mm -hmm. how do you learn that? I don't understand the question. I'll, I'll be more clear, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> is the Neighborhood Watch coordinator the person that, that is sort of the focal point yes. where this information funnels to? Yes. Explain He's, that. Neighborhood Watch coordinator is a liaison. So basically, Neighborhood Watch coordinator would be the contact for the police department. For example, let's say um, the Neighborhood Watch coordinator at a community calls us, hey, Wendy, we're having a lot of issues with... Um, internet safety, our parents are concerned that their children are online doing things, can you come out and do a presentation on internet safety? So they'll coordinate that. Or they'll call me and say, um, hey Wendy, you know, we had this burglary two months ago, I heard from another neighbor that there was a suspect, you know, can you confirm that, what's, you know, what's going on with that case? So it's kind of, we ser they serve like a liaison for information, so I don't have, you know, 40 people calling me asking me the same question. One person can call me and they can relay that information to all their neighbors. So in this instance, George Zimmerman was the person that the neighborhood was told to contact. Yes, he was a neighborhood watch coordinator. So when they had an issue, instead of calling you, they were directed, call Mr. Zimmerman, and he will be the person that gets in touch with you. Yes, if they wanted anything, any kind of special training, or they wanted to get some feedback on a case or whatever, then yes, that would be the case. And that's the way it's designed to work. Yes. And that's the way it did work. Yes, basically a liaison is, is, a, is a sign that's the coordinator. After you made your presentation, you continued to have some, some contact with Mr. Zimmerman by email or phone? Yes, actually not that long. I'm not sure how long after, but he did email me about a certain burglary that had occurred. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was supposed to do? Yes. You mentioned that um, Mr. Zimmerman had in some conversation with you that he was or at some point had been a criminal justice major? During the presentation he mentioned that, yes. Uh -huh. And did you meet, think that was a bad thing? No, I thought that was great. Actually, I um, wanted to recruit him to be a citizen on patrol volunteer for the San Francisco Police Department, but he said no. Tell me what that program is. Uh, okay. Citizens on patrol. On patrol. So citizens on patrol are police volunteers who go through a four to five week training program through the Sanford Police Department. They have a polo shirt kind of uniform and they drive in citizen on patrol vehicles with amber lights. That program, the citizen on patrol volunteers are part of an extensive background check. They go through the training, they go to field training before they go out and patrol their neighborhoods. So you coordinate that program separately and distinctly from the Neighborhood Watch? That's actually my role in the police department. The Neighborhood Watch stuff I just did because I enjoy doing Neighborhood Watch. Mm -hmm. 
there was nothing about Mr. Zimmerman's demeanor, manner of interacting with you or others that you noticed that made you <clears throat> raised any red flags about him. Indeed, you thought that he might be a good member for your other program. Yes, um, he was very professional with me. Um, he seemed a little meek to me. Um, he just seemed very, um, he seemed like he really wanted to make changes in his community to make it better. Were you aware of him also working and being married and having other responsibilities in addition to being a neighborhood watch volunteer? Um, I knew he was. I knew he was married. That's about it. He had a business, but I didn't know the details of his business. We didn't sure. get into that. And you knew him to be a resident. Yes, he was a resident, a concerned resident. I think I heard you say, but if not, I'll clarify, you are not a sworn police officer yourself, is that correct? No, I'm a civilian staff. But you have worked in police departments for a number of years. Yes, um, since 1998, minus two years that I worked for the state. And in this particular instance, I take it, and maybe others, you would take a police officer with you to the presentations? I would, the way I generate that is I will let uh, the lieutenant or the captain know, you know, I'm going to have a neighborhood watch meeting, and the, the department would always want um, presentation there. And it's, it really goes back to community policing. You know, you ha the officer has to know who the residents he serves. So it's really a great opportunity for residents to get to know their police officer and for the officer to know who belongs in that community as well. The the, in, the the police officers that went with you are they did they work that neighborhood if you will? Um, the officer um, Buchanan Club he did at the time, and the sergeant that was there he was a supervisor that day for patrol. So I'm not sure whether that was his assigned area or not. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm going to grab some water. Sure. Help yourself if you care for some. Too. Okay. Thank you, I'm fighting a little bug here. As a civilian representative of the police department, um, do you, as part of your presentation, give lessons in law? No, we don't talk about law. like. What statutes are now? Right. You don't say, for example, legally, for example, that someone may follow someone to gather information to report to the police. No. The only statute we go over is a burglary statute and what constitutes a burglary. Mm -hmm. But we don't get into any kind of law. So you say, for example, you shouldn't follow somebody, but you're not saying that if you see somebody suspicious, you can't follow at a distance to gather information to provide to the police. No. I don't You're not saying that. No, no. Generally it's a good idea if you see somebody suspicious, don't engage them. Exactly. I take it likewise that um, when you say on your slide, you're not the vigilante police. Mm -hmm. I take it what you're saying is you shouldn't be overzealous to act like a police officer to actually engage somebody physically. Exactly. And I mean, in that same slide, it says you're the eyes and ears. That's really all law enforcement needs is the neighbors to be the eyes and ears uh, for us. You're not suggesting in any way that if you are attacked, you're not allowed to defend yourself. Oh, not at all. Likewise, there's no discussion, is there, of, about firearms specifically? No. There are some uh, meetings that do bring that subject up. Mm -hmm. But you don't talk to the residents about whether or not they are allowed to legally carry a firearm? No, that's not my place to tell them that. Mm -hmm. 
Are you generally familiar with the laws surrounding um, firearms? Um, I know the constitutional rights, and if I start talking about gun laws and everything else, I usually start getting a debate, so I don't try to get into that. <laughs> okay. That's not something that you never say, for example, if anybody has a gun that they carry legally, you're not allowed to. No, I don't say that. You never get into that at all? No. I've had people question, I have this, what if I do that kind of, of thing. So based on, on neighborhood watch criteria, you ask people to follow the law mm -hmm. and to be the eyes and ears of the community, to talk with, with each other a lot. Mm -hmm. If they see a crime being committed in their mind, call 911. Mm -hmm. if, if you would answer just out loud. Oh, yes, yeah. sorry. It's a tricky thing with the court reporter. Yes, I apologize. And that if you see something suspicious, but you can't necessarily say, I see a crime being committed, you're supposed to call the non-emergency number. Yes. Um, sometimes I would get questions like that. People saying, well, how do I know if it's suspicious? I don't want to bother you guys for no reason. And I say, call us anyways. Let us check it out. Let the law enforcement officers check out to see what's going on. Because it could be a bona fide suspicious activity, or it could just be someone that they might not recognize, someone new to the community. So we always encourage them to call. So that's, in fact, one of the things you say is if you see somebody that you don't recognize. Yes. So, um, and that's the important part why I tell neighborhood watches get to know your neighbor get mm -hmm. to know who lives in your community because then when someone who doesn't belong there you can quickly identify them hey wait a minute I don't know but I don't know this person they probably don't belong here and you can call the police and have them check it out do I take it that the basic way this works if it's going to work effectively is if you see anything that strikes you as out of place or suspicious or a person that's unfamiliar, you err on the side of making the call. Yes. May I have just one moment? With the idea of someone who seems suspicious, do you talk in some detail with the neighborhood, um, the neighbors, the, uh, the residents, about the kinds of things that might be suspicious? For example, I guess someone you don't know yes. would be one. Someone that's in a place in the community that might be unusual. Yes, um, we talk about, you know, if you see a car, driving around in circles and you don't recognize a car in your community, that might be suspicious. Um, if people don't want, if people are walking around in areas that are not um, typically walked on, that could be suspicious. For example, um, coming through between houses where there's no sidewalk or pathway. Yeah. Someone that seems like they're trying to hide. Yes. Um, someone that just seems maybe um, looking at cars, looking at windows, yes, people, looking at houses. People peering through windows or peering through the vehicles or trying to, really hard to not be noticed kind of thing. Or people that seem to be doing something that may be a little inconsistent with what common sense tells you 
people would be doing in a similar circumstance. For example, um, walking around without any particular purpose in the rain. Yeah, if you're just walking around in circles, yeah, that would be suspicious. Not well, circles, sure, but just the idea that someone's in the rain and they don't seem to be running or jogging. Okay. exercising. They just seem to be in a place in the neighborhood that seems a little wrong, okay. and they don't seem to be having a purpose. Yeah, if there's no purpose, then, you know, calling 911 and non-emergency dispatch. Sure. Non-emergency in that situation. Yeah, because they're not posing a threat, mm -hmm. you know. Not committing a crime, you can see. Yeah. Just something about them doesn't seem quite right. Yes. Did, um, Mr. Zimmerman have contact with you, and in fact contact with your superiors after your presentation to uh, compliment you on the work that you had done to help them with the Neighborhood Association. Yes, I think it was an email to my chief, but I think it was, might have been before the presentation. Uh, I'm not sure. You might want to. When was the presentation? September 22nd, 2011. Madam Clerk, what is the document's exhibit number for identification? I believe it's Defendant's A. Pardon me? Defendant's A. A. May I approach, please? Yes, you may. Please move on to the list and mark as Defendant's A for identification and ask you to take a look at it and see okay. if it's something that you before, yes, this was um, before the presentation, um, and um, this is George Zimmerman. He wrote an email to um, Chief Lee at the time, um, basically complimenting me on my professionalism in contacts with him. He outlines the uh, the, the the letter is to Chief Lee. Yes. Um, recognizing you to Chief Lee for the work that you had been doing. Yes. And um, then, of course, Chief Lee's response copied to you. Yes. S let me just focus on the date for a second. I believe you said that the presentation was in late August of 2011? No, September 22nd, I believe. Not August 22nd? I'm not sure now was a while ago. Um, this letter came before the presentation, if I remember correctly. Okay, fair enough. Um, were you pleased that Mr. Zimmerman took the time and effort to compliment you to your boss? Yes, I emailed him and told him that. Thank you. Your Honor, I would move Defendant A, please. Any objections? There is, Your Honor. Um, there's a hearsay objection as to part of it. Okay, want to approach and we'll talk about what part.
follow Deputy Jarvis back into the jury room. Thank you. I'm really going to ask from the defense. Okay. Yes, Judge, thank you. The, um, the state opened the door to this kind of information because they went into, with this witness at some length, about her interactions with Mr. Zimmerman and getting the program set up, talked about emails, talked about phone calls, and um, um, talked, in fact, about the do's and don'ts and the specific conversations. I think this by virtue of the state introducing that part of this witness's interaction, they've opened the door to communications that Mr. Zimmerman had with the Sanford Police Department, where he complimented um, this witness, where he thanked her, where he thanked the police chief, and um, it's certainly appropriate. It's not self-serving in the traditional sense of what we're talking about. And from a, uh, an admissibility standpoint, it's clearly a business record. It was provided through the emails we got in discovery. Okay, thank you. Response? Just briefly, I think this is akin to Ms. Dorable uh, hearing a conversation. For example, hearing the defendant talk to Chief Lee and then hearing Chief Lee talk to um, or uh, forward it to someone else. So I, I just, it, you know, if, if we think about it in those terms, that she overheard something, it's sort of like electronic overhearing, her being forwarded this chain of email. So I would submit it's just, it's hearsay. And certainly the email from uh, Chief Lee to the defendant is self so okay. um, The chain. objection is sustained. Um, Exhibit A will not come in at this time. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. Good morning again. Morning. Uh, Ms. Dorval, do you still have um, the document in front of you that we talked about earlier, Defendants A for identification? No, I believe the clerk removed it. From oh, the, thank you. Yes, you may. Thank you. I'm not going to ask you any questions about the content, but just to get an idea um, specifically. Um, this document is an email from Bill Lee, is that correct? Okay, sustained. Uh, I'll do it, try it a different way. Uh, do you remember if you got a copy of this, uh, this email? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, so you had seen it before today? Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Guy, are you there? Yes, it is. Thank you. Ms. Dorval, did you tell the defendant at that meeting or at any other time that he should call the police if he sees somebody walking home in the rain? We talk about suspicious activity and suspicious persons. Not not those exact words, no. Okay. Was it discussed that people who walk in the rain are, are suspicious? No. You mentioned that, um, you mentioned the citizens on patrol. Yes. Th that's a more intense uh, involvement for citizens with the sheriff's office or the uh, police department? It's a, a little, it's very different. Um, and that, there's been some confusion about it. But the citizen on patrol is a police program that we coordinate in the police department. We do background checks and everything else. It's completely different from a community neighborhood watch where community volunteers are part of. So it's and completely what, different. What, what led you to recommend the defendant into that program? 
what led me to recommend him was just because of his demeanor, um, the way he, he interacted with me, um, his high interest in being involved in his community and wanting to be a part of the city of Sanford community. And you gained that just from your brief interaction with them, both at the meeting and the, and the few contacts you had prior to the meeting? I gained that from the meeting, the phone calls, and um, the emails. All right, you also asked questions about uh, following. D did you tell the defendant or anybody else at that meeting that it was okay to follow someone from a distance? Uh, no. W was your information to them or instructions to them not to follow anyone at all? Basically, they see suspicious activity or suspicious behavior to call 911 and non-emergency dispatch. All right, and you were asked about the defendant's role as the coordinator being the liaison. Um, that is, I think you said that if people contact him, then he would then contact you. Yes, as it relates to possible more training or presentations, stuff like that. All right, to your memory, did the defendant ever contact you on behalf of someone else after the meeting? He contacted me on, an, uh, on the burglary but after that was the meeting. Because of his own interest, your understanding was? Well, Sustained. well what, what was your understanding as to why he was contacting you about the burglary? Because of the neighborhood concerns regarding the burglary and a possible suspect being identified. What instructions did you give the defendant about being um, the coordinator as it relates to the block captains? Did he have a role in organizing block captains? Yes, the neighborhood watch coordinator has a responsibility for block captains and recruiting block captains. And what was he supposed to do with the list of captains that he recruited? I'm getting him engaged in the, in the program and make kind of assigning a block to each block captain. And was he supposed to contact you in reference to the block captains? Yes, I did have some kind of communication asking about the sign-up list that he had um, put up that day during the presentation. And did this defendant ever contact you about a list of block captains or who he had recruited? No. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Green Cross. Okay, thank you very much. May Ms. Doravel be excused? Thank you very much. You are excused. Um, call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Here's Donald O'Brien.